Good evening, Wilson community members. Uh, my name is Tim Carter, Superintendent of Schools. This is a board meeting, Wilson Central School District, Tuesday, October 26th, 2021. This is not an interactive board meeting, but it is a live stream. If you're at home and you have a question, comment, concern, and you want to uh, address the board, please call 751-9399. Ms. Cloud will be glad to get that message to one of the board members or to myself to get that answer uh, to the question you may have. So this time I'll turn the board meeting over to our board president, Mr. Waters. Thank you, Superintendent Carter. Please stand and join me. Of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Under uh, the board members, the meeting minutes stated October 12, 2021. Oh, second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? To a uh, special presentation we have with us, uh, Vice President Kevin Rademacher, 8 through 12 studio manager for the fellows, to give us a presentation on our uh, hopefully upcoming capital time. Yep. Besides the presentation uh, that's going to be on the sideboard, um, if you're at home, this presentation is also on the district website. So if you're watching this uh, live from home, you can click at the district website, find the presentation for tonight's capital project, and follow along using that also. Kevin? Thank you very much. So uh, I've shown this before, but I'll go over it again. This is uh, part of the uh, capital improvements project that we're voting on in December, uh, December 14th. Um, so we're gonna go through the kind of the scope items and graphic plan, uh, both site work and inside the building. So what you're looking at right now, that's the elementary site. Uh, there are two phases to that site. And the reasoning for that is we're trying to leverage state aid on that. So we're waiting for some state aid to be replenished um, from debt dropping off or, or project dropping off by your um, running clock from a previous project. So the non-hazed out on the bottom, you see phase one, that's the first part of the projects. So it really just means that they're gonna be held back on submission. So everything in the hazed um, area, which shows the two parking lots, that's gonna be a phase two submission, which is delaying the submission, which also delays the permitting timeline. So uh, the five-year rolling clock for eight rolls on the uh, permit application. So. Uh, that's the reason for doing that. All of that will get done in this project if it is possible. So inside the building, you're going to see a bunch of different colors. Um, yellow, you're looking at gang and single bathrooms. Um, we're going to have fixture replacement. Um, then you're going to have the dark blue color, which is going to be ceiling replacements. Uh, the light blue color is going to be HVAC improvements. And then you see the orange strip on the facade of the building. Uh, there's some masonry reconstruction possible into our placement along the face of the building. Uh, that results in issues that we're seeing there. There's some bricks that are falling out of plane with the rest of the structure. You can actually go back to the slide. I just want to, board member, just call the attention in the haze area, which is the second uh, phase of this uh, project, is not only uh, working on parking lot that's in the middle, but also construction of that new parking soccer field, which not only allow us to have parking for the soccer field for the fence, but also loads buses up front so we have bus parking. So we can pull those buses out of the current location and move them over into that, uh, that bus zone. Um, so you're going to see a full representation of possible signage that, that will is intended to go in front of the elementary building and the high school. Um, all of these have to go through a seeker um, and SHPO study. Uh, seekers and parent pre-vote. Uh, SHPO, historic preservation, will somewhat control what can be uh, 
construct in front of the store buildings and structures. Uh, we'll also have to go to the local zone to make sure that it's an appropriate signage that meets your local zoning. SED has now uh, mandated that we go through those local um, zoning boards, etc., to, to receive approval, not just rely on their approval. Uh, so you can see we've really uh, done ourselves on the graphics and eventual vote date and time is on the board. So you can scroll the next sheet. Uh, this is not our concept. This is from a signage vendor that has conceptualized it based off of some of the architecture on the buildings to tie it in. Uh, it's very successful. Obviously, that'll be a part of our work to get power, et cetera, out there, uh, up to those locations uh, if they're allowed to go in in their current location. Now we're looking at the high school um, spaces. So same colors prevail. Uh, you're going to see the, the blue, the light blue is indicating the HVAC upgrade. So that's the main gym or, or the uh, north gym, we'll call it. Um, and then we have two other spaces that are getting new split systems towards the front of the building. Then you're seeing ceiling and flooring replacement, finish replacement. Um, in the hallways where you see sort of the angled lines of blue and I'll call it orange. Um, and then you see floor finishes in that lower pod of classrooms. And then we have some uh, classroom reconstruction at the very bottom left of that bench um, that has a little more intense scope uh, for the Also, some work on the second floor. Same key code for colors, but you can see the uh, toilet room fixture replacement and also. And again, this is the concept for Bill High um, signage. We go to the next slide will have a speak of graphic. So you can see we're looking to reposition it and have it face a two sided sign. So either way you go up the street, you can see it a little closer. So obviously, it has to pass through SHPO, pass through global zoning. And if we can do all that, that's kind of the ideal position. Now, as we go um, outside here, the track, uh, we're looking to get that area paved. Also, by the pole bar, that's the area you see in blue there. Um, and that's going to really enhance the storage capability. And we're going to do some work on, you know, some work that the uh, system that water, et cetera. This is a general breakdown of costs per building. Uh, so you're going to see a total on the right of $9.8 million for the total project cost. But you see the breakdown per building, uh, phase one and phase two. So that, again, that's split up um, for constructability, but also for utilizing savings. So, quick breakdown of schedule here. If you go positive on December 14th, uh, we move forward right into schematic design and progress through design development, construction documents. The first one to go to SP for permitting. Uh, we're, we're targeting uh, submission in November, but we're hoping to get back a permit in February 23, um, and then we're going to start rolling with construction. We're purposefully, again, holding back phase two for submission. Um, with a hopeful um, SCP approval in November 23. So later in the year, much later in the year approval. So that'll be a 24 year construction to start for that work. And board members, the way we just, I designed or the district designed this particular presentation was you guys to get the first look. Besides the construction, the construction committee, we've been working on this. We're going to get first word to ask how many questions to ask. Of what is here in the, right now is part of the construction committee. Ask us questions because once the, once the project starts running through, that's when you're going to get questions from the community. We do plan on holding on November 9th the public forum. The first part of the board meeting, but anybody in the public can 
to join us or watch it online. You see, you know, lots of so there you there to take a tour of some of the PTA group meetings, uh, to give them a chance to take a look at it, ask questions about, the, about this project. I mean, there's not a lot of, there's nothing really fancy. It's pretty much the maintenance of the district, the heating systems, the ceilings, the floor tiles, all the stuff that needs to be updated to bathroom fixtures and things like that. And storage. So parking, so a lot of them are just your, some plan maintenance or just no major upgrades, but just taking care of uh, keeping your buildings up and looking great. Questions, board members? What is that acronym? SHIPO is State Office of Historic Preservation. So they have to okay that anytime we're doing work. Now, this, even at the elementary school, registry. So, uh, anytime we've done any kind of work dealing with the project, it's not only the environmental study, it's the seeker, it's a tax ship, and they have to be okay with what we do. So, any building that the reserve for it's an assessment done. They used to allow the letter saying there's no historical effect. We just keep submitting that. They don't allow that anymore, so every single time you have a project, you have to go back. It's okay. And there was some work we had done in the last project at home. Where there is. And they did come in and start an archaeological study. So I'm very sorry. They didn't get a chance to finish that because of where uh, they were located. They, they found they're yeah. utilities, so they stop. They right. let us know they're going to come back and oh, okay. do that this time. So that just will delay us a little bit. We're used to working. And the the company that designed the two front signs is also the company designed the school board of the state. We could have two reasons. One, they're on state contracts, but also we're familiar with their work, familiar with their equipment and their program, so there's nothing really we have to really learn. So they are they work with the state program. They designed the, specifically a high school plan using features of the class. They use some of the stonework, the pattern, the triangles, the design of the front of the building, they put that in the top and attach some things to her in the high school. So we're hoping that that will allow us to have that pass ship over the seat. And it does move the sign. Recognize that after it. Right now, the sign is square with the front of the building. So this new design, in order for it to be effective, which is a two-sided screen, it will have to be turned uh, to be kind of perpendicular to the road, so you can see it. And it'll be a, it'll be a, a screen TV, standing four dots. It will be. We won't have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Which we currently have to do. Send some of the other things. This one we told we run computer desks. We'll be able to keep things updated. Our, our district communication system is very automated. A lot of messages that we put up, communication headlines, they can go out to the board too. So, continue to our communication efforts with the Questions for the last time? So, financial impact on tax base. Zero. It's the additional. first thing they're going to say. Well, how much? It's zero additional. One of the things that you can remind your, anybody that asks you is because of the way that the district has run its finances and the way that we 
for curb sewage system. Um, it will actually save them money in the long run. We, we actually fund our projects enough so that we, we make a little bit of money on them. So the way that the state rules are, we're able to do it. We've had, you know, great public support in the past. One of the reasons is because of the fact that, uh, you know, our finances are good. Our bonds are all, our bond rating is as high as it can be. So it, it's, a, it's a great way to, and really what we're doing is protecting the community's investment. They've already spent millions and millions and millions of dollars on this campus. And this is a way for them to spend and, and protect their investment just like they would do with their house. Yes, my mom. I see that, but I wanted to That's okay. get it out there. Our, our reimbursement rate is 83%. District from itself, 17%. Yeah, that's right. 17%. Thank you. Mr. Rademacher, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay. <laughs> we can do this all over again. Long ride from Brockport, but I appreciate it. No problem. Individually asked questions. No bad work, man. So no, 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 no problem. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thank you. We're telling her for policy. Thank you. At our little board workshops, we tend to use them also for policy review. And there are two policies that uh, are up for review. The first one is our last work session. We began a conversation about adding a student ex officio board member to the board of education. This is the policy that we received from policy service along with the yellow. The whole policy is brand new, we don't have it, but in yellow, we wanted to highlight how we tweaked it with Wilson after a conversation, which basically means that the ex, ex officio student member shall serve for one year, it has to be at least 18 years old, a senior in the high school, and shall attend such high school for at least two years prior to the selection. So they have to enter as a sophomore, be elected as a junior, and then serve as a senior in the student board. The high school principal will uh, verify that each student interested in the position meets the requirements of in this policy. Student interested in serving as the ex official board member will file an application, be nominated by petition, which is signed by at least 25 high school students selected through a school wide election representative. Very similar to what we talked about at the last board meeting, student board member follow a similar process. And once we have uh, this process in place and we have a vote on it, it will. The first year, we're going to have to delay it by a few weeks because in, after further review of the school law book, it did say there has to be a public vote. But I skimmed right over the section that says it has to be at our annual meeting. So you can't do it in December. It has to be at the annual uh, board election. So it will be in May. Talk to Mr. Stack. Teaches the government class, students here, Mr. Stack class, and he is going to work with myself. And he's going to talk to us with some of the students in the class to help set that process in place. So if the vote is positive in May, the third week in May, we would start to select the pass out the petitions, and by the third, end of the first week of June, we'd be able to. Vote. We talked about the students doing a short video, showing those videos in the classroom on the morning. And the students. That person would be the student board member for the following. Summertime, we would invite the board member. Your, your attendance at the summer meeting would be if you make it. Starting the school year would be expected that they schedule into sports and social life schedule. So they attend every board member. Other boards actually have the student board member report out in the school baseball. It's one of the districts so that would be one of the responsibilities. Former, any questions about the policy? So they have to be junior this year, right? Each year, the they had to be the juniors. Yeah, following it. Right. A junior every year will be elected in for their senior year. 
any questions, board members? The other policy is policy 3430's primary policy. Is entitled Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion District. There's an overview of what this policy is, definition of what diversity, equity, and inclusion mean. Rule of first page. At the end of that first page, it talks about the district needs to establish a DEI committee, which is a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee that meets periodically, and the purpose of the committee is to assist the district in creating and implementing its diversity, equity, and inclusion plan. This is part of some of our board uh, goals this year that the committee will help drive that goal. Also, top of page two, it talks about who can be part of the committee students, parents, persons in front of relations, district program administrators, teachers, including at least one special teacher, guidance staff, other district staff, board members, community members, all can be part of this committee. We would have a diversity, equity, inclusion coordinator, head of student services, Mrs. Schaus, so our special ed director, director of special ed, your official title, official, takes care of everything student service wise. Um, down at the bottom talks about teaching and learning some of the work of the committee. And Community and family engagement, which is why we have a resource center. Workforce diversity, diverse school learning opportunities, and student supports disabilities. And then, of course, training opportunities and notification to board members. I put this in your uh, or topic last uh, Friday. Take a look at this, would be, that would be considered the first lead. And this is your opportunity to ask any questions about those two policies. If there are none, we'll move forward with the first read and then have it go on for a vote at the next Thank you, sir. And I think I have one more item on there. This is why I came to see. <laughs> <laughs> This is our opportunity to say thank you, board members. Um, last week was School Board Re Recognition Week, October 18th through the 22nd. School Board Recogni Recognition Week, time to promote awareness and understanding of the importance of the work performed by the school board members. Wilson Central School, Di school District is joining all public school districts across the state to celebrate School Board Recognition Week to honor local board members for the commitment to the Wilson community and its children. It takes a strong school to build, to build a strong community. These men and women sitting beside me devote countless hours making sure our schools are helping every child learn at the higher, highest level. They make tough decisions every month and spend many hours studying educational issues and regulations in order to provide the kind of accountability our citizens expect. The key work of the school board is to raise student achievement by creating a shared vision for the future of education, setting the direction of the school district to achieve the highest student performance, provide accountability for the student achievement results, developing a budget that aligns district resources to improve achievement, support a healthy school district culture, and working to work uh, which works and, and healthy culture in which to work and to learn, and much more. School board members give the Wilson community citizens a voice in the educational decision making, making even though we make special efforts to show our appreciation in October, the contribution is year-round and is a year-round commitment. Members serving our district with years of service, President George Waters, Vice President French Fuller, Trustee Darwin Bubar, Trustee Christopher. Arlen, Trustee Tracy Kent, Trustee Timothy Crop, Trustee Kathy Stewart. Um, I was looking down at the next line as I was saying your name, blanking out. School board recognition gifts uh, are, have been created for you uh, by Mr. Chad Lefevre's art portfolio student, Becky Myers' pathway students. 
I wish to learn from the French. <laughs> also, double the big grocery bags. Say that uh, all of us here are really not here for recognition. It's, it's something that we do to give back to our community, and it's, it's very important. Under items three, personnel appointments, A approved Scott Harvey, executive as educational student, students, excuse me, study council committee members for 2021. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Item B approve Robert Keown as JV Boys Basketball Coach for the 2022 season for the WTA. WTA agreement. Oh, no. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Item C approved Maria Corello as food service helper monitor effective on June 26, 2021. For the CSEA cafeteria agreement, that would be a state finger for the motion. Move. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item D approved Susan Forby as food service helper monitor, effective October 26, 2021, salary and benefits for SCA cafeteria agreement, and the New York State Fair. So, sorry. Sorry. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Item E approved non instructional substitute employees, Sarah Reynolds, substitute supervisor. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Under four, other A, adopt the resolution issued in secret negative declaration for 2021 to plan facilities reconstruction. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Item B adopt the resolution as to special meeting and vote to be held on December 15, 2021 at 10 a.m. Valentine at the RJ Zip Athletic Center from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Purpose of voting on two propositions. One proposition number one, 2021 plant facilities reconstruction project. Number two, proposition number two, establishment of a capital improvements reserve fund. So, second. second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 
RFC approved the 2022-2023 bu budget development plan. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? And D approved the disposal of 2020-2021 balance for June 16. for retention rates. Disposition schedule for the New York Local Government's LTS standard. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item E approved Matthew Wiggins student enrollment at Niagara University to complete classroom observation hours in the school. Jim Alderman, social studies teacher on Mondays at 11 30 through 1 30 p.m. finding the fingerprint parents for the New York State Education Department. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item F, approved non-resident student attendance for the 2021-2022 school year. Responsible presentation tuition. So, second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Five policies A, we've got our first reading. It does show this is for that adoption that's that's the next So we're skipping over five. Item six, conference request to AHF will allow a request to attend the National Association of Educational Office Professionals virtual summit. And to the gratitude from 12 p.m. through 3 p.m. on November 17, 2021. Registration cost of $25. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I would like to thank the board for allowing me to attend the 2021 district clerk workshop titled Empowered to Work Whatever Comes Next that was held virtually on October 13th. The main topics of discussion during the workshop included policy development and maintenance, records, disclosure, and retention, nuts and bolts of the employee discipline process, and coffee talk, which focused on a variety of topics. The key takeaways that I received from the workshop were making sure that there's a category for policies listed on every board agenda, regardless of whether there's a policy to be voted on or not, that there are certain policies that must be reviewed annually. And I had received sample spreadsheets that um, NISBA shared to assist me with tracking policies that had been reviewed and adopted. So I would just like to thank you again for this opportunity. I found each session to be equally informative and relevant to my position. Thank you. Under A, use of facility request A, approve the town of Wilson Recreation Park. Request Jim for the adult volleyball on Thursday evenings throughout the school year from 6 30 to 9 30. Dates not allowed for principal are November 11th, December 25, December 23, December 30, January 24, and April 14. Second. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very trusty support. Do you have any No, it's time. Thank you. Thank you. Superintendent Carter. I will uh, keep it brief. I wrote down welcome and thank you. So I appreciate the students that joined us tonight. Uh, I know Mr. Rodemaker left already, but I want to thank uh, his group of us uh, through the minefield as it relates to capital projects and uh, all his assistance. He's given us, but also Justin Schaefer gives us uh, to make sure that this project moves as smooth as possible. Um, I wrote down COVID update, but I really board members, I didn't have anything new from the last time. We're at a pretty, we're at a pretty good standstill, which is good. The fact that uh, we had to new cases, of course, now tomorrow I just changed ourselves. Um, and uh, I just best not to say those things, but uh, you know, kids are getting used to being here, being here every day. 
Tracy in the back, and if we're moving through, we have great incoming uh, week again. Thanks, and I'm looking forward to the uh, incoming uh, the next uh, sports season. The only thing I do want to give the board an update on in the community is uh, I mentioned it once or twice, either in videos or in this conversation about that mobile testing unit. So Niagara County Department of Health, along with the, the 10, excuse me, nine school districts that are in Niagara County, um, have been working towards coordinating a testing, mobile testing site for a number of reasons. One, as I mentioned in the past, the staff member in the Wilson Central School District or any school district in New York State either has to be vaccinated or has to test weekly. So we have to have we've had a site where staff members can go and get tested on a weekly basis if they're not vaccinated. Um, but the other issue we were having is when a parent has a student that becomes symptomatic, it's very problematic because the parent has to go with the student testing in order to return to school, it has to be a PCR test that can sometimes take a while to get back. I know I know the pediatricians in the area very well. I've talked to them quite often, and they're aggravated with that system too. And I don't have to go down blame. Uh, so we've been trying to find a little bit of an easier system for parents. So this mobile testing site, we're probably two weeks from having it up and running, and me being able to communicate to all the parents that when they pick up a child that's, that's sick and sending the symptoms, instead of taking them to the doctor. Here's a place they can go. It'll be located at one of the local school districts. It'll be here one uh, one morning a week, but then it'll be in other places that if you take this referral, you get a, a free COVID test. No, no uh, cost to the parent, no cost of insurance. The county itself is taking care of the cost of all the tests and the mobile unit. And if um, you're negative, you come back when you're symptom free instead of waiting those three, two, three days, missing school, things like that, while they're waiting for the, the person. It's, a, it's an in the moment. You get a results within 15 minutes. It is PCR. So therefore, it meets the requirement for um, the child to return. It's been one of the, the systems we've been trying to put in place since the beginning of the year. But the contract's just about ready to be bid. Niagara Falls is actually going to hold the contract for the all of the districts, um, and then we've we are working with Niagara Falls schedule. Like I said, one morning a week it'll be in Wilson, it'll also be in neighboring districts around. So, if a child is sick, parent has a child, they can still go to the doctor if they want to, but it's just they're waiting for the symptoms to resolve. They still have to have a test. Here's a place they can go. It's no cost to the parent. I hope it's going to be a good service for everyone. Plus, any of our staff members that have to continue to be tested to be able to do the site it's a district. That, like I said, it should be up in the next week or two. And uh, board members, that's my uh, report for right now. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you, Superintendent. Board members, do you have anything to add? So we'll open up for a public forum. If anybody would like to address the board, please state your name. Thank you, Superintendent. No need for executive session. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thanks for coming to Red State.